Welcome. We're going to talk a little bit about sampling or figuring out what participants are going to be part of your study. And there are two basic concepts here. One is the population, and a population is a group of objects, events, or individuals with specific characteristics that a researcher wants to generalize to. A sample, on the other hand, is a smaller group of objects, events, or individuals with the specific characteristics that the researcher wants to generalize to that's actually chosen to participate in the study. There are quite a few different sampling procedures that are used in quantitative and qualitative studies. The criterion sampling, what you would like to do is for your sample to generalize to the population. So it really matters what kind of sampling procedure you use, what type of sample you select, your sample size, and then also your sample demographics. Another thing to consider when sampling, if you were to send out a survey, you would have your sampling frame. And this would be all the people that you want to either uh, send an email to um, and request that they complete your survey. So all those email addresses for all those people, that's your sampling frame, or the total number of people who could possibly respond. The accessible population will be the people who could possibly do it. Uh, you know, you might not be able to do it if your computer is broken, for example. And the completion rate is the uh, people who actually complete your survey. So even though you might send your survey out to 100 people, only 50 people might complete it. In quantitative research, we have uh, five broad sampling methods. It would be simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, cluster sampling, systematic sampling, or a convenient sample. So the convenient sample, let's start with that one, is the one that you have probably most frequently in student research, where you just have people that actually um, are available for you to fill that out. The um, most random sample, actually, it's a simple random sampling. And a lot of people get the convenient sample confused with the simple random sampling because they feel that whoever participated in a convenient sample was random, right? Because you didn't really plan it was random who participated. However, in order for it to be a true simple random sample, everybody has to have the same opportunity to participate in your sample. So let's say if you're just standing out at the corner in front of your university and you're asking a random person that walks by, really not everybody in your city had a chance to participate in that study, but only the people that are actually walking by the university. And you need to, in order to figure out if that could be a problem for your study, you need to know what kind of uh, uh, people are actually walking by your university. It could be that only students walk by your university, and therefore your uh, sample would probably generalize pretty well to the student population, but it wouldn't uh, generalize well to the overall population of your sample. In, uh, in order to do a little bit more of a, take a little bit more of an influence on the sample, you can do a stratified random sample. And there we distinguish between proportional stratified sampling and non-proportional or disproportional stratified sampling. Um, we, we speak of stratified sampling when we try to replicate certain proportions in the population. For example, if you know that 10% of your population are uh, African American and you would like to have a proportional sample, then you're going to strive that your random sample has exactly 10% African Americans in, the, uh, in your sample. A way to do that is, for example, to create different bins, for example, a bin for um, African Americans, a bin for Latinos, a bin for uh, Caucasians, have been for Asians, etc., and then pick whatever percentage you need out of that pin, uh, bin, but in a random manner. 
So that way you can create exactly the proportions that you need to match the population, but still each person is picked randomly from within each bin. The non-proportional, disproportional stratified sampling is when you actually increase the participation rate of certain groups. For example, if you know that you have 0.1% uh, of the population is coming from uh, uh, Azerbaijan here at the university, and that would result in half a person in your sample, you might want to move that to one person because it's going to be hard to just sample half a person. Um, uh, cluster sampling is when you uh, would sample uh, but you have a group of people. For example, if you sample the classroom, you're actually not just taking one person, you're sampling a cluster of people. And here's an overview of the quantitative sampling methods. So the two broadest distinctions are probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Okay, there are quite a few qualitative uh, sampling techniques and um, one of the things that's different about quantitative and qualitative is with the quantitative, if you pick one, that's your sampling technique. But sometimes a sample can actually um, qualify for two different sampling techniques in qualitative research. The first kind is extreme or deviant case sampling, and this is where you are picking a case or a person, a participant who's very different. Suppose you wanted to look at outstanding teachers and you picked someone who won the National Teacher of the Year Award. Okay, obviously that's a really extreme in ca a case. Now you might have an intensity sampling. This is where you would have um, a sample that demonstrates your, your quality, let's say really good teaching. Um, so you might get, uh, let's say, people who've been recognized within your school district as being good teachers. So they're really good, but maybe not the national um, teacher of the year. And typical case sampling is if you just pick typical teachers. Uh, then we have uh, maxifi maximum variation sampling. And uh, this actually, if you skip down one, goes with homogeneous sampling. And here with maximum variation, we're trying to pick participants who are at the extremes, like maybe one of the best teachers and one of the worst teachers. Whereas with homogeneous sampling, we're picking participants who are all pretty much the same. Uh, stratified purposeful sampling is like um, uh, some of the um, quantitative techniques in that you're actually um, stratifying and then you're purposefully picking participants in each level. A critical case sample is when you um, are looking at um, something that happened that um, is of particular importance, like maybe um, you might want to interview students who were around during the Columbine shooting case. That's a critical case. Uh, we also have um, some, some we have quite a few um, techniques here. One is snowball or chain sampling. This is uh, kind of a little bit about the practice of um, sampling. So you're picking someone to sample and they may have a particular characteristic and then you would ask that person, well, do they know somebody else who has that characteristic? And you get, um, it sort of snowballs or people will, will suggest other people. Criterion sampling means you pick people who have um, a particular criterion. For example, you might want to look at um, teachers who, um, let's say, teach in the fifth grade or teach in a charter school, for example. They've met the criteria of being in the, in the fifth grade or at a charter school. Theory-based sampling means you're sampling to match a particular uh, theory might be Piaget's theory, for example. Confirming and disconfirming case sampling is where you want to um, uh, 
demonstrate that confirm that a certain phenomenon exists or disconfirm that it exists. Uh, purposeful random sampling is actually just like the quantitative uh, random sample where it's not the usual thing in qualitative to randomly choose subjects, but, some, but sometimes qualitative research has been criticized for that. So sometimes qualitative researchers will purposefully do a random sample because they want to show, well, this is going to work if I do a random sample or not. Sometimes you might uh, sample politically important cases. And finally, the last one is convenience sample, which like in quantitative research is where you're just picking the people who it's just convenient for you to find, like the students walking in front of your campus.